Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I, my prayers have already been answered. There's people here that I've been praying for, and I thank you, Jesus. Uh, Pastor, would you pass them cards out now? I tell you what, I'm not advertising myself, and I want to explain to you what I'm doing. They're passing out a business card of mine, and I'd like each of you to take it. And on the bottom, there's a small, uh, my YouTube, I have a YouTube channel that's live every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. And on there, it gives you how to connect on that. And you can write in there, just hit subscribe. It doesn't cost you a dime, it's just subscribe. And you can comment on there, and it comes right to Marie. She's operating the uh, computers, and uh, we can talk with you direct. And uh, every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. And the Lord has really been using that and blessing that. And we have people from all over, from Scotland, the Philippines, Mexico, all over the United States that come on there. And it's really, really, really exciting to hear these people. And I have some of them come on there uh, that uh, they come on live and I have them talk and interview them. And uh, they put songs on there that they personally sing. And I'd like you to join that Tuesday night. And I need your support. And uh, you know, I get very emotional when I speak. And I don't apologize. And I've been sick for the last couple weeks. And I prayed that the Lord would take it away from me, take it away from me. And so yesterday, I felt better than I ever have and this morning. So if I stop and cough, please forgive me. <clears throat> but it got into my lungs, and now I'm okay, I think. <clears throat> Dear Lord, I come to you again this morning. If I could be invisible, and share your word, I would. Please give me the words to share. Help each person out here that they would receive your word, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I owe it all to you, Jesus. Amen. And today, I brought my Bible up here because every message I give is founded on the Bible. If it isn't in there, I'm not going to talk about it. I didn't even make notes today. <coughs> I've been praying about this here for a month coming here. And I thought, no, I'm not going to make notes. I'm not even going to make notes. I'm going to share right from the bottom of my heart. Now, you folks have all heard my testimony in the past about the life I lived. I'm not going to go over that. Because God has even forgotten about it. But I'm going to start, and I'm not real smart, so I can't take a verse in the Bible and just expound on that verse for an hour. But I can tell you that every word in the Bible is the truth. And it was way too late in my life when I learned that. And I'm still learning it now. But I'm going to start, and you're going to say, what in the world is he talking about? In Genesis 1-1, I'm going to start there, and I'll go all through the Bible. And by 3, 4 o'clock, we'll be done. <laughs> <laughs> so... I got to keep your attention. But Genesis 1 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. My God, you created this world. You created the gardens. And you created Adam and Eve. That's how powerful you are, our God. Later, it says how Daniel, the king, threw Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel went in there. And the lions didn't even touch him. 
King came up this next morning, found Daniel completely untouched. That's how powerful my God is. And Jonah, he got swallowed up by a big fish, and a lot of people laugh about it. But I'm going to tell you, I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jonah got swallowed by a fish. And God brought him out of that fish and rescued him when he decided to follow God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they got thrown in the fiery furnace and not a flame touched them. God protected all of them. Not a hair on their head was burnt. Then you go on into the New Testament. God sent his son, Jesus. Jesus walked on the earth. He healed the blind man. He healed the lepers. Changed the water into wine. Fed 5,000 with a couple of loaves of bread and a few fish. That's how powerful my Jesus Christ is. Last night I was having coffee over in Hardy's with another minister. And I said, let's pray. And I said, Lord, I don't care if the whole world sees me praying. I will not deny you again. I will not deny Jesus Christ again. That's where my faith is. And I'm so sorry I was too late in life to realize how powerful Jesus is. I have seen him change the alcoholic. The drug addict, I run into a lot of them because of my ministry. I run into a lot of them. God can change everything. But I always say God can change the gossiper. The people that are hateful. The people with no love in their life. They're all sins just as big as anything else. Adultery. Not doing what Jesus asks you to do is just as big a sin. As I went through life, and I realized what Jesus wanted of me, I said, here am I. I'll do it. I shared with you last time how I came home from on the water after he answered my prayer. Does anybody here remember that about the fish? I went out there, I'll tell you the short version. I went out there, I was kind of mad, Jesus, God, because my daughter was gone. And I went out and I said, God, if you're so powerful, I want, I want to catch the biggest fish I've ever caught. And if you remember this, you can stop me and I'll go on to the next thing. But I went out there and I cast out once. Out of the water come a huge fish. And I landed it. Biggest one I ever caught. I took it down uh, in front of Casey's where Marie works. And I held it up, a huge fish. Next week, Monday, I went out again. Cast out once, and out of the water come this huge fish, bigger than the week before. I went home, and I showed it to Marie. And I said, God, you're telling me you have more blessings for me than what I can even expect right now. Third week, I went out there again, cast out there. A huge fish come out of the water, and I landed it. And in the book, it shows a picture they wrote a book of my life, but anyway, in the book, it shows a picture of the fish. It went from here to the ground, 36 inches long, 15 pounds. I got real intimate with God that night. 
The next week I went out and I said, God, here I am. I kept casting out and I couldn't catch anything. Didn't catch a fish. Finally I sat back and says, I don't need a fish anyway, God. You already told me. And then I remembered Abraham and Isaac. Abraham took Isaac up on the mountains, bound him up, took his, his whatever spear, sword, was ready to take Isaac's life and sacrifice for Christ to God. I says, now I understand, Lord. And I jumped up. I says, Hannah's yours, Lord. I don't need a spear given my life. As long as she's okay spiritually and physically, I can handle that, God. I said, I give her all to you. And I picked up my rod, cast out there and out of the water, come a huge fish. And I jumped up. I said, that's you, God. I got so excited that I lost the fish. <laughs> but you got to believe me. <laughs> so I started up the little motor and I took off for short. I says, I will go and tell everybody about you, Jesus. I will change my life. I will go all over the United States and tell everybody about you, Jesus. Just take care of her. It's been 12 years. I know where she's at. She's okay. But I went back to town. And now for you people, how much commitment have you given to Jesus? One of the scariest things I've done in my life. I went home. And for you married men or women, I went home. I said to my wife, the news had talked to me about it. And they wrote a book of my life and they had it on TV. But I took all our savings and I put it in there and I spent $25,000 without asking my wife. And I always tell people, if you do that, I got a good divorce attorney I can tell you about. <laughs> <laughs> she never batted an eye. My wife says, I'll stand with you, Steve. I'll stand with you for Jesus Christ. One more thing that changed my life, different steps in my life as God has led me and helped me grow. And I told you this story too. But what, when I really realized that I was forgiven, that I had a new life, the old life was passed far away. I can't even tell you the filth and the dirt that went on in that life. Because it's not important. It's important what Jesus done. What he done, how he changed me. From that to standing here. And I told you the story about Australia. Going down main highway there with Charlie, my brother-in-law, reasonable brother, and seeing that iron out there. In that sideway there. I said, what is that? And Charlie says, that's art. This went on three times. He says, we're a socialist country. We have to spread the wealth. So they get an architect and they build some monument. Pretty soon we started laughing. But this is what happened then as I went home that night, went to bed, and I had to speak in, in South Dakota the next week when I come back. And I fell asleep preparing for it. And I looked in the heaven and it was so real. It's the most real dream I've ever had in my life. I looked up and I says, God, I'm going to be a sculptor when I get home. And he says, Steve, I am a sculptor. He says, yeah, I'm God. What did you make? Well, he says, I created the world. <laughs> The water, the flowers, the green grass, the trees, everything. Wow, that was nice, wasn't it, God? 
Yeah, he says, and then I put something in it that could love me, and that I could love back. So I put a man and a woman in there. I said, that was chaos. Well, it wasn't a God. Well, he says, I told them they could have the whole world, but just don't eat that one tree. He says, what happened? He says, they ate that tree, and now they were going to die. What did you do? God, what'd you do? He says, Steve, he says, I sent everything I owe, own everything I have. I sent my son down there. <laughs> what happened, God? He says, they rejected him. They took him and they beat him and they literally spit on him. They drug him up a hill, made him, made him carry his own cross. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. And this was so vivid to me. I've never forgot it, and I'll always remember it. I said, what happened, God? Well, they took him and they nailed him right to the cross. And they put that cross up there. Someone come along and they shoved the spear in his side and he's bleeding. Bleeding. He's bloody all over. And then they shoved a crown on top of his head. I got a thorns on top of his head. Oh God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. God, what happened? What happened to your son? He looked up and he says, I thirst. So they gave him a sponge with vinegar and water, shoved that in his mouth. God, I said, what happened then? God says, you know, Steve, the last thing that my son said, he looked up to heaven to me and he said, it is finished, it is finished. And that's when I jumped out of bed there in Australia and I started to cry and I said, Ray, God told me that my whole life, it's over. My sins are forgiven. I don't care what I've done and I don't want to go back and tell you about it because God said it's over. It's done with. That's how my whole life was changed there. God said, Steve, your sins are forgiven. And then I always tell you that in Thessalonians, Revelations, it tells how Jesus is going to come back. The, the heavens are going to open up. He's going to come back with the sound of a trumpet and the sound of victory. Every knee is going to bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and I am going to fall on my face. Jesus, if you hear me now, I'm going to fall on my face, saying, please find me worthy, O Lord. Please, Jesus, it's all by your grace. It's by your grace alone. It's not by what I do. It's not by me standing here. It's because Jesus said it is finished. He gave his life. For me, if I was the only one in the world living, he still would have died for me. And he would for each of you. Each one of you, if you're the only one left on this earth, God would still die for you. And I never really realized that till I was old. And anybody can join in that celebration. Let me tell you now, the most important part, how do you join that celebration? How do you join that celebration? I promised my father that every time I spoke, I would share the truth from the Bible. I remember in Des Moines, all I had left was a car, 
living out of the back seat of the car. And I had to go to Carroll, Iowa. So I went over to Carroll, Iowa. As I almost got over there, I smelled something. I pulled over the side of the road and it was my car. The only thing I had left. And it was on fire. Went over, lifted up the hood and the flames shot out of there and I grabbed the blankets from the back seat of my car and I threw them over the motor and I laid on top of it right there on the highway and the flames went out and I said, God, I cursed you. I said, God, why did you do that to me? Now I don't even have a car left. Sat there a while. I was mad. I cried. Pleaded with God to start my car. Got in, turned on the key, and it started. Drove into Carroll, Iowa. Done my business. Went back out. Drove to a convenience store. Bought a 12 pack of beer. Drove down the highway. Put a can between my legs. I'm driving along. And just that fast, I had forgot that Jesus was chasing me. Just that fast, I had given up again. I had neglected him, rejected him again. But Jesus, all this time, through my life, he knew that Steve Fry belonged to God. He never gave up. And he knows that each one of you out here belong to him. Don't give up. Listen to his calling. Listen to him speaking to you. How do you join that great celebration when Jesus comes back? John 11, 35, I told you before, is my favorite verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Lazarus had died. He'd been dead four days. When they came and got Jesus, said, your friend died. Jesus wept, and he looked over Lazarus, and he wept. And then he raised Lazarus from the dead. Just like I had been dead for 40 years and Jesus wept over me every single mile I took. Every single sin I committed, Jesus wept over me. He never gave up until the latter years of my life. Jesus says, Steve, arise, you're now alive. I am now alive unto Christ. And I don't care if I don't make it back to Platt. If God takes me home, I know that he's got a home in heaven. And you can say, well done, Steve. Well done. And so he says in the Bible, come unto me, all ye that labor, heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, no matter how hard you try. Unless you give it all to Jesus. Take it all, Lord. It's all I have left to live for, Jesus. Getting out of bed every morning. We meet downtown every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at the church. We spend time in prayer from 8.30 to 9. It's all about you, Jesus, every single day, no matter what happens. It's all about you, Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in this day. Come in my heart. Jesus. Jesus, I can't change what I am. 
but you can. It's all about Jesus Christ. If I can hug each one of you and lead you to Jesus, I would. That's what you have to do. Come as a little child. And if you're already born again, you still have to come. You come daily. I come every day. I pray, Jesus, touch me. Touch me. Touch me, Jesus. I want to be made differently. I want to be made like what Jesus wants me to be. Not what I want to be. Lady had the blood issue. For 10 years, she had tried every cure she could, couldn't find a cure. Finally, she says, I have to go see Jesus. He's the only one that can cure that. One of my favorite stories in there is I picture this little old lady wanting to come to Jesus. The crowd around him, and I don't know if this is exactly what happened, but it's pretty accurate. The crowds around it, she thought if I could just touch Jesus, I could be healed. She got down, the crowd was pushing up against her. She got down and she crawled over. And just as she was ready to touch the hem of Jesus' garment, Jesus said, go in peace. Your faith has made you whole. He saved that lady just because she wanted to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. Now I know I'll never be famous. I don't care. I'll never be well known all over the world. I don't care. But every day when I get out of bed, I want to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. I just want to touch the hem of his garment. So that he takes and chases the devil out of my life. The devil's tempting me every day because he knows I'm on fire for Jesus Christ. And he's trying to deceive me and to trick me. And I refuse to let him do that. He even tries to get into my dreams at night. I refuse to let him do that. Folks, have you touched, born again or unsafe, have you touched the hem of Jesus' garment? Have you reached out in faith and said, Jesus, just let me touch you? Then when you walk into Hardee's, when you walk into Casey's, wherever you walk, when you see these people, you can say, I love you. I've never had anybody, when I told them I loved them, I said, can I tell you I love you? God changed me so much, that's why I tell everybody that. Amen. Can I tell you I love you? I've never had anybody, anybody that said no. I don't care who you are out there. I'm going to tell you right now that I love you. And I want you to find Jesus. And I want you to touch him the hem of his garment and he will change you entirely. Once again, one promise I've always made is that the world gets so watered down and so sinful and I got conned into it but I want to tell you how to overcome that. And I want to be as close and intimate with you as possible. The way you overcome that you go in the privacy of your bedroom with your spouse or if you're single by yourself. You get down on your knees and say, Jesus, Come into my heart, Lord. Change me. I'm so sorry, but I can't over 
do it over. You have to change me. You have to forgive me. I give it all. I give it all to you. Jesus, there's people that are listening that I want them to know I love them. But it's not through me, Jesus, it's through you. And on my YouTube, the people that I come in contact with from West Virginia, from, from Castle Rock, Colorado, to wherever it is, Lord, all over the United States, Jesus, touch them, touch them, that you will be King of Kings and Lord of Lords. As I leave here, Jesus, I want you to remember each one that's here. Whether I'm back in South Dakota or wherever, that somebody would find you, Jesus. I'll do it for you. My whole life, I'll give up. your name, Jesus. We're going to finish with a song. If anybody wants to commit their life to Christ, you can come forward. It's not worshiping me. The pastor's right back there. We're going to finish with a song, Steve. Church page 696. Oh, careful, I'm sorry. Stay here. No, that's okay. Right here. You can be seated. There's a song here. Are you tired? Round. 